Hey guys, Sal here, and today we're taking a little peek at what's in my Steam Deck travel bag. But before we get to that, a word from our sponsor. Sponsor? Sponsor? <laughs> The hag -i bis Hagibis. 65 watt GAN multifunction quick charger and dock. Charger itself, as you can see, it has an HDMI, 4K, USB, 5 volt, and the host, which is gonna be used for displaying this on your TV. They included a braided USB Type-C cable, double-headed Type-C cable, while charging the Steam Deck with the Hagibis. I was down to 1%, charged it up to 99%, which is normal for the Steam Deck. It took about two hours and 47 minutes to fully charge. So exactly how did the Steam Deck's OEM charger fare? Well, from 5% to 99%, which once again is full charge on the Steam Deck, it took about two hours and 14 minutes. So the OEM charger was somehow faster than the Hagibis charger. Now moving on to the Nintendo Switch, from 47% to full charge, which is 100, it took about an hour and 28 minutes. Now moving on to the OEM charger, for the Nintendo Switch at 45% to full charge. It took about two hours and three minutes. Now the Nintendo Switch does not support 4K out. And while docked, it will only output to 1080p. With that said, it looks pretty good on my 720p TV. And I thought the video looked pretty good on my 4K TV for a console that doesn't support 4K natively. Yeah, sure. If you want to get picky, it's a little fuzzy around the edges. And and not as sharp as some elitist gamers would like it to be, but overall, I thought it was a pretty good visual experience. The Hagibus dock supports 4K 30 hertz through the HDMI port, Fine. and the Steam Deck's and the Steam Deck's Type-C display port outputs up to 4K 60 Hz. When connecting the Steam Deck to my 4K TV via the Hagibus dock, I thought it looked pretty crisp, but looked a little fuzzy around the edges, and it didn't look as fluid. Despite all this, it was very much a good experience, and most of this is minor for a traveling charging dock. Where did that Steam Deck bag get to now? Not again. Help. Next, emerging from my Steam Deck travel bag is these easy SMX wireless earbuds that they actually sent me for review. Yeah, they probably mainly are better on the Nintendo Switch, but they work for PC, the Steam Deck, your cell phone, anything that has a Type-C USB port, this will work on. In the box, they provide a Type-C to Type-A adapter. They have the Type-C wireless dongle itself. And here are the earbuds themselves. They come with a charging case, which is mainly made of plastic. I kind of like the metallic color. I'm not gonna go too far into these because they are meant for a future video. This one is a 19K milliamp, 60 watt power bank. Can't have a Steam Deck travel bag without some sort of power source. Glossy strip, scratched, 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 but I barely used it. You got two USB 3.0s and one Type-C, which is 
in and out. On the front, as always, with Anchor Power Banks, you have a button right here. If you press it, it'll show you how much of a charge it has. In the box, you got this useless manual. Anchor provides two types of USB cables. One is a USB-C to USB-C cable. Another is a USB-C to type A cable. Oh, look at all this hair. Just clean that damn cat hair. Where the hell did it come from? Oh, tried to charge it with this and it seemed like it was taking forever. At some point I'd like to try that again, but for now, ironically, I was charging it with the Steam Deck charger, which is the only thing that did charge it. Almost forgot. They didn't include a wall charger, but they gave you this nice little carrying bag. I tried using these cables as well to charge it and that seemed like that was taking forever. For the most part, with this Anchor Power Bank, you're probably only gonna get one full charge of the Steam Deck. That's it. I charged the Steam Deck from 26% to 99, which is full charge, and that took about two hours. Okay, calm down. I almost forgot. It took about two hours and 13 minutes to fully charge the Anchor 19K Power Bank with the Steam Deck charger. What you got to say about the Anchor Power Bank? I see, you're speechless. Essentially, this little guy is a handheld gaming PC and can be used as your main desktop at home. Or you might consider replacing your laptop with this while traveling. The onboard keyboard, well, is good. It takes up half the screen and you have to hit a combination of buttons just to get it up. All right. I know the jokes are coming, so that's what she said. This is where a good portable Bluetooth keyboard comes in handy. So I picked up the iClever tri-folding wireless keyboard with touchpad. You might have noticed this oval case dangling from my Steam Deck travel bag. And within this case is the Red Dragon Taipan Pro, a very good affordable wireless gaming mouse, which if you're interested, you can check the link at the top of the screen or in the description for a full review. However, this might be a little overkill since the iClever has a touchpad, but I prefer a good mouse over a touchpad. The iClever tri-folding wireless keyboard is made of a mix of plastic and aluminum. The keyboard uses sliding hinges, which I believe uses magnets to keep the keyboard snapped open or shut. The keys on the iClever have a pretty decent amount of spacing, which is surprising for the keyboard's footprint. And even though the keys are small, it doesn't affect typing on it because I found myself making very minor mistakes, if any. The touchpad is a good size with two buttons and I think it's really responsive. Overall, I think the iClever is a really good travel keyboard and probably one of the more useful things in my Steam Deck travel bag. You got anything to say about any of the Steam Deck accessories that came from that bag? Well, that is what's in my Steam Deck travel bag. At some point, I'd like to add a travel display. And as soon as I get a case for it, we're gonna be adding the 8-bit dough wireless pro controller to the bag as well. There's gonna be a review on that soon. All the products featured in the video and the equipment I use to produce the videos are linked down below in the description. Don't forget to check us out on social media. And as for now, I'll see you in the next one. Well, I know us Italians grow hair really fast, but somehow I managed to grow hair in 30 seconds, produce a ton of dandruff, and then cut my hair again. There is definitely something amazing about that. And oh yeah, there were quite a few shirt changes in here as well. God, I suck at this.